Hey guys, Phase 2 was just recently announced, so I just want to make a video on the biz gear that you can get as a mage, as well as uh, how you should go about prioritizing each piece. Hopefully this will help you guys out, whether it's because some of your officers are maybe asking for, for a list of items that you want to get throughout the phase, or even if, say, you're in a DKP guild, uh, the idea is just to maximize the amount of quality pieces that you can get during this phase. Uh, one last thing that I'll just point out before we jump into the video is that uh, the DPS numbers that I'll be showing up on the screen just comes from the Mage Sim Sheet. I'll put a link down below. And some key assumptions I made is that uh, I was in a group with a Shadow Priest and a Rusto Shaman. Uh, the fights were five minutes in length, and I had one Innervate per fight as well. So just something to keep in mind if... Uh, say your your kill times or your group compositions vary a lot from my own assumptions then just feel free to go ahead and sim your your results on your own however uh, the gear that i'll be showing and as well as the explanations i'll i'll be putting on the screen um, should be still relevant regardless of uh, your kill times and group compositions in most cases all right, so just before I go over the loot priority, I just wanted to show you guys uh, the uh, BIS gear setup that uh, I'd say probably 95% of the people will be running. I'll explain the other sort of setup that you can have later on in the video. Uh, however, most people will be running this set of gear here. So you'll want your four piece uh, T5 set. Uh, simply because the set bonus is just way too strong. So you'll really want to prioritize that. Uh, you'll get the, the Sun King Talisman, which is from Kael'thas. The Cloak of the Sunstrider from Kael'thas as well. The Mindstorm Wristbands from Alar. Then the Nexus Key from KT again. And then the Sunstrider Gauntlets from Kael'thas as well. So you'll see a lot of the loot that you want to get actually comes from the last boss in uh, Tempest Keep. Uh, which is kind of a pain, but uh, I mean, it is what it is. And then you have the Belt of Blasting, which is a crafted recipe. The Boots of the Guardian, which are from the Lurker Below, with the optional boss in SSC. And then you have some of the reoccurring pieces that you'll actually bring from Phase 1 into Phase 2. Uh, honestly, you should already have these pieces uh, by now. If you don't, then I highly suggest you trying to like prioritize these pieces or maybe talk with some of your your officers in the guild see if uh maybe you could get some sort of priority over other classes that might actually swap these gear pieces out so obviously the ring from karazhan uh it's just a no-brainer you'll you'll have it if you've ran a few karazhan uh, raids then you want the ring of reoccurrence this one drops off the chess event um i've haven't seen it drop often, but uh, it might just be from bad luck. So if you do see a drop, you'll definitely want to get it. And then the Icon of Silver Crescent, uh, just from the badge vendor. Um, if you don't have it, I don't know what to say. You guys just go, go out and run some more heroics. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to get. And uh, then the one off of Mag. Uh, this one, again, I've seen it only drop twice. Uh, if, say, your your locks are rolling on this, maybe just point it out that they have a better wand that drops off of um, one of the bosses in Tempest Keep. Uh, so this is your bis going into Phase 2, so maybe if you can get priority, that uh, would be ideal. So that pretty much sums up the brief overview of your Phase 2 bis setup. So let's just take a look as to which pieces you'll want to prioritize in Phase 2 and the details as to why. Uh, overall, as a mage, it's pretty simple since uh, you typically just want most of your tier gear anyways. Uh, so we'll start off with what you want to highly prioritize. Uh, ideally, you get these pieces potentially even week one, but uh, if not at worst, week two. Uh, this would be the tier shoulders. You'd want either the tier legs or tier helm. Now, I did put uh, three pieces up here. However, the goal or kind of what you're aiming to do at the start is just to get your two-piece set bonus online as soon as possible. Uh, for those who aren't really aware of what the two set bonus is for Mage, uh, for, for Tier 5, it's simply a 20% uh, damage increase to your Arcane Blast. Uh, so that's actually really, really big in terms of like actual DPS numbers. It's around 200 or 250 DPS increase compared to your Phase 1 BIS. Uh, so really, you, you want to aim for those pieces as soon as you can. And the reason why I'm putting the legs, the shoulders, and the helm here, uh, compared to, say, the uh, the gloves that can easily be uh, 
picked up from the second boss in SSC is because uh, all these pieces are straight up upgrades over what you are previously wearing. And on top of that, um, all those pieces don't share slot like item slots with the Spellfire set. So realistically, uh, you could get two of those pieces or even all three of those pieces put them on and you'd still be able to wear the full three piece spellfire set as well so you'd be gaining the two set bonus from your tier five and the uh the set bonus from your spellfire set as well uh so that would kind of be the best case scenario uh however i will kind of argue that if uh say you're being prioritized your two set bonus or even your full four set bonus uh off the bat by your guild uh so they're going to try to feed you all the pieces as soon as possible and you do see say for example the gloves drop off of the second boss in ssc uh don't don't grief your guild and don't, don't tell them well listen the the gloves aren't that good uh i want to get the the gloves off of uh, kt and so on um it, definitely pick them up because you you don't want to be that guy that uh, has like didn't pick up the gloves and then you saw for example i don't know the the legs drop off later in the raid and you still can't use your two set bonus because there's nothing else that dropped for you, right? So you really want to definitely put your two set bonus online regardless of what pieces drop. Uh, but if you're saying like a DKP guild or you're not being prioritized any of the pieces and it's kind of like a free for all, uh, then definitely try to get the legs, shoulders or helm first. Now onto the high priority section. Uh, what you'll want to get is obviously the remaining piece out of the first three that you didn't get. So if you just got say the legs and shoulders first, then try to get the helm as well, uh, because you'll be able to use it without again, breaking your spell fire set. And it'll just be straight up better than what you were previously wearing as well. So it'll still be a DPS increase. Then you'll want to get your last four set, uh, tier piece which is the the chest uh the reason why we're only putting the chest in a high priority section rather than the very high priority is because if you get the the chest alone um and so say you you got the the legs and the shoulders you haven't seen the helm drop uh and but you do see the the chest drop if you get the chest uh, you won't be using it until you, you get the helm because it'll be a DPS decrease because you'll be breaking your Spellfire set. So just keep that in mind. Uh, like if you get the chest early on, it'll kind of be in, sitting in your bank unless it's the uh, the, the piece that will unlock your two set bonus. But if it's like your third piece, for example, then it'll be sitting in your bank until you get to your fourth piece, at which point you'll be able to wear them all. So that's kind of the reason why it's in the high priority section rather than the very high priority. Then you have the staff, uh, the Nexus key staff off of Kael'thas. Uh, once again, another piece that I'd highly uh, prioritize, less so than obviously your your tier tokens uh, because of those set bonuses that we discussed earlier. But it is a substantial DPS increase at around 30 DPS over your phase one bis. And um, there is some competition as well for this uh, for this staff. You'll have a competition uh, from Ellie Shamans, from Boomkins. Uh, so the, the locks at least thankfully will not want this because they want the main hand offhand. Uh, but you do have, a, like I mentioned, other classes that do want this. So there will be competition and uh, you can argue it's from the last boss in Tempest Keep. So if you're like in a more casual guild uh so you might get the, the your first kill maybe i don't know week two week three or something because you're progressing so just mathematically you'll uh you'll see potentially less drops just because you'll be killing this boss less so than maybe the first few bosses right that'll be a little bit easier so that's the reason why i would highly prioritize this this weapon because it's it's simply a, a big dps increase over other items that you'll see later down the list and it's potentially a little bit harder to get as well on to your medium priorities we'll start off with the trinket which is the only one that you'll pick up this phase uh, so it's the serpent coil braid the reason why I'm only putting this in medium priority is while this trinket is a big DPS increase over something like Quagsire or even Lightning Cab that you'd be using for phase one, uh, at the end of the day, it's it's a class trinket, right? So assuming your guild is pretty standard, you'll maybe at most have three mages. So I'm really not worried about not getting this item. 
unless you're really hit hard by RNG and never see it, I would expect most people to have this pretty early on as well. Uh, so I would definitely not hold Mighty KP for this or skip out on the staff, for example, for this trinket. But uh, it is a really nice piece to have. And on top of that, it also has some hit on it. So uh, if you're in the awkward stage of gearing where uh, you're kind of lacking hit and you don't really know where to get it, then uh, this piece will kind of help you out in that department as well. So definitely a, a medium priority, not more than that. For the second piece in your medium prior category, we have the gloves. Uh, these aren't the tier 5 gloves, however, these are the Sun King gloves like we had mentioned earlier. And the reason why we're putting this above other pieces that you'll see kind of later on in the list is simply because uh, you do have some competition for, for this piece here. So you'll be competing obviously against other mages in your, your raid, but also against uh, other warlocks since it's part of their abyss list as well. And uh, also uh, because it is still a relatively decent DPS increase over something like the uh, Spellfire Gloves that you probably be using uh, previously or at around 10 DPS increase. And lastly, again, like mentioned earlier, similar to the staff, it drops off of the last boss in Tempest Keep. So uh, just odds of you getting this piece is a little bit lower than other pieces that drop off of earlier bosses. Um, with that said, though, uh, the reason why I'm putting this, say, lower than something like the staff or even the trinket uh, is because um, the DPS increase, again, is 10 DPS. So just mathematically, it's a bit lower than other pieces that are shown earlier in this list. And um, lastly, I mean, you do have an alternative, right? Eventually, uh, people will not need tier pieces. So uh, all your mages, your your hunters, locks will will have their, their tier pieces if they do need it in their list. And so you'd be able to pick up the gloves eventually, the tier five gloves. And if you compare the DPS difference between the tier five gloves and the uh, the, the ones uh, from, from Kael'thas, they aren't that big of a difference. So, um, so you do have that alternative. So that's why I'm just kind of putting in the medium priority over uh, other items that were shown earlier. Your boots drop off the optional boss in SSC, the Lurker Below. Uh, these ones will have some competition as well, uh, mainly your LE Shamans. Your locks really don't want these, they'll just simply want the crafted boots, uh, the boots of blasting. So at least there's that. Um, nothing much to say here, the boots are just straight up better than the ones from Kara, uh, but they're not significantly better to purchase them more than the previous pieces. So. And the last item I'll put in the medium priority section will be the belt. Uh, this is the crafted belt, the belt of blasting. A few asterisks I guess I'll put on this, guys, is that first it's a crafted item. So really depends on how your guild wants to manage these items. Uh, since you need the pattern to drop first, and then you kind of need that tailor who will receive this pattern to also have the nether vortexes available to actually craft it for you. I'm also kind of assuming that most guilds will give out their first few nether vortexes to the melee classes to upgrade their crafted weapons, since those are available at the start of phase two. They don't need to wait for any pattern drops. And second thing to note is uh, this belt kind of really depends on your head situation. I put it on medium priority since I'm assuming I would not have any uh, Ellie Shaman in my group. So I would need the hit and this spell will actually help me to hit cap. However, if you're in a, a different boat where you do have an Ellie Shaman, uh, you may want to bump this one down in priority. Uh, the belt that you would be using in the meantime would be the Spellfire belt, which is the, uh, the regular tailored one that you'd be using in phase one. Uh, and so I guess a similar argument can be made as well that if for whatever reason you don't have tailoring on your mage, uh, which honestly you should, you should already be tailoring and have the Spellfire Belt, but in any case, if you don't, then you'd probably want to bump this one up in priority as well, since you'd probably be using something like the Girdle of Runation or even maybe a Karazhan Belt that would be uh, pretty subpar. All right, so on to the low priority items. Uh, this will seem a bit weird for some of you guys because some of these items are actually really good. Uh, but first off, we'll start with the Mindstorm Bracers. Um, the reason why I'm putting it in such a low priority is simply because I'm assuming most of you guys will have the Season 1 PvP Bracers. 
and uh, hopefully we'll also get the new season 2 pvp bracers at launch while you wait to get these wristbands the mindstorm wristbands uh, and if you compare the dps difference between the uh, season 2 pvp bracers or even the season 1 pvp bracers to the mindstorm wristbands is actually quite small so there's that and on top of it you also have some competition in the form of ellies and locks as well uh, so honestly i would just wait a bit to get these and let other classes dump their dkp or or loot prize on this item first and for the last item in the low party section you have the neck uh, for the neck, you're kind of in a similar boat where the DPS difference isn't really significant enough between this one and your phase one bis to, to prioritize it more than this. Uh, and to make things even worse, there's a buttload of people who want this item. Uh, since the neck, you get it from a quest item that's a guaranteed draw from Kael'thas. It's kind of similar to Max Head, where you would just get the item and then turn it in for, for a, either a melee DPS option, healer option, tank option, and so on. It'll be the same principle. You'll have a physical DPS, healer, and tank option, as well as caster option for the next. Uh, so you'll have a high amount of competition for, for this item. Uh, so honestly, I would just say, let other people fight for it. Don't skip it all together. You'll eventually want it, but definitely don't prioritize it. So on to the last section, probably the most controversial one as well. Uh, first item here will have the cloak. Uh, this one is uh, pretty simple. Arguably, the cloak off of uh, hiking is better, depending on your kill time. Um, but at best, it's it's a slight upgrade. So I would probably this one last. Then we have the wand. Uh, the wand itself is only better than the mag wand if you need the hit. Uh, but with your typical gear setup, you'll honestly you'll be hit capped. So arguably, this would only even be considered if for whatever reason you can't get the belt of blasting. Maybe you have like really, really bad RNG on on that pattern and you have no Ellie Shaman, uh, then you could consider it. But otherwise, I would just skip it all together. Then, like mentioned earlier, you have your tier five gloves. Uh, we kind of already skimmed over this, but uh, realistically, you don't really want them. Uh, they can be a good side upgrade in the meantime while you're waiting for the KT gloves. And honestly, you'll probably want them anyways for later phases uh, to keep your two-piece T5 set bonus. Uh, but I would really just wait and get this once all of your guild has in. They're just essentially vendoring the tokens, so that's an easy pickup then. And lastly, the big one. So this is the Vestment of the Sea Witch. This item drops off of Lady Vosh in SSC. And from what I've heard, the drop rate isn't too, too great on this. But in any case, uh, there has been some debate as to whether this was best in slot or not. Uh, so the idea would be that you would be using the Vestment of the Sea Witch and you would use your tier five gloves to maintain your four set bonus since you uh, aren't using your, your tier five chest because of the Vestment. And then you would replace your Belt of Blasting with your Spellfire Belt, since you just really don't need the hit, because the Vestment of the Sea Witch just gives you so much hit anyways. So the issue with this is kind of twofold. So first, let me just point out that the stats from the Sea Witch setup versus your regular Best in Slot setup is very, very similar. So you're essentially gaining some Intellect Spell Power just by using the Sea Witch setup, but you're losing quite a bit of Spirit. Um, now, the, the first issue itself is that by using the Sea Witch Chess, like mentioned earlier, you're kind of forced into uh, using the Spellfire Belt, uh, just simply because you want to get rid of all the hit uh, that you're getting from the Belt of Blasting. But the issue with this is that the Spellfire Belt has only arcane spell power. Um, so while this is, is kind of great because uh, you just want to spam arcane blast all day, uh, in a more realistic or typical race setting, probably won't really be the case since most fights last long in Tempest Keep. Like, uh, in particular, KT you know, can last uh, over 10 minutes, and eventually you'll just end up needing to cast some Frost Balls. You won't have a choice, right? So I did some comparisons, and using my assumptions like mentioned earlier in the video, uh, I changed the kill times uh, themselves, left everything the same, and basically the Sea Witch setup combo won only at the 2 minute mark. So 2 minutes and, and under, so any kills that were faster than 2 minutes, you would be doing more DPS using the Sea Witch setup versus the regular best in slot setup. 
but most kills won't be that quick. Uh, I, unless maybe at the end of tier five, it might. So there can be some argument to that. But at least with with the type of gear we'll have at the beginning, definitely they won't be. Um, and also, I guess the second issue is that uh, this type of gear is really nice for your locks. Like it's definitely a huge upgrade for them. And considering it's a side upgrade at best for mages, you're kind of griefing your raid if you take this chest piece. Um, so I guess in short, unless your guild is like a very speed clearing guild or like a parsing guild, for example, and your boss skills are very, very quick, um, I would just let your locks have this. Uh, it'll just make your own personal gearing route a lot easier as well since you'll be going for the tier pieces. And also, it'll make the gearing route as well for the locks uh, easier for them as well. So, it's just a win-win at the end of the day. Alright, so that sums up my Phase 2 loot party guide. Uh, I put a quick image of what your Phase 2 bis would look like. Uh, if it was a bit confusing during the video, at least you'll have a good idea this way. And I'll also put a link down below if you want to see it in more details. Uh, if you feel like I missed anything as well, just feel free to let me know down below as always. So at least other people who are watching can at least get that information as well. Uh, if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.